We're in the city of Milwaukee, home of former Governor Patrick Luzzi, uh, the Democratic governor, the 38th governor of the state of Wisconsin. You were governor from January 4 of 1971 through July 6 of 1977. Governor, thanks for having us into, Yay. having us to 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 your home. Delighted. Um, do you um, how, some of the major issues that you dealt with over that period? One of them, of course, would, would you consider in your top three or four major issues the issue of merging what were then the four-year schools with the University of Wisconsin definitely, Madison and Milwaukee? I'd, I'd rank it among the the top two or three, really. Really? Yeah. Well. Um, why was it so important? And I was reading some history. Other governors before you tried, tried to get it yeah. done. They couldn't get it yeah, done. Yeah, Kohler tried. Right. Yeah. What, uh, what, what type of um, groups did you, what types of coalitions did, did you have to assemble to get it done, sir? Lee, Lee Dreyfus. Lee Dreyfus. Uh, we had a Republican Senate, a Democratic Assembly. The Assembly was no problem. When it came to the Senate, I needed two or three Republican senators to be for merger. Right. Dreyfus was chancellor up in Stevens Point. Yes. And he looked across at Green Bay and saw Green Bay was getting a much more generous budget because they're part of the University of Wisconsin system than he was at Stevens Point. And uh, he was the one uh, campus executive that really went all out in supporting me on merger. Wow. And uh, without Lee's help, I don't think I could have put it together. Um, when you ran for governor in 1970, was um, did 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 you run on the issue of merging oh, of emerging the I system? I don't think so. I don't remember, but I don't I don't think it came up during the campaign. You don't. Okay. I don't think so. I'm not sure now. If you if you find uh, press clippings to the contrary, why? I haven't found any press record. clippings to the con <laughs> contrary. Um, why did you consider it so per, uh, so important to merge our, our, our system? Well, uh, I was looking at it from a historical standpoint, and uh, we started out with the University of Wisconsin at Madison being founded, I think, the same year we became a state, or maybe the year before. I, very, very close. Yeah, and uh, uh, that was a great, a great university then, and it is today. Now. The, the the Madison campus did expand. I mean, they had uh, they had a, a campus. Well, they were connected with the Milwaukee campus, but they also set up uh, campuses in Green Bay and Parkside. And so uh, it was more than just a one campus system. Yes. And in fact, in addition to the the, the campuses, they had the four year campuses. They had a number of two year campuses around the state. Right. Uh, they also had a, a wonderful extension service, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they they lived by the formula that the boundaries of our state are the boundaries of the university. That's called the Wisconsin idea. The Wisconsin idea, and I think that what uh, they're proposing to do now would scuttle the Wisconsin idea. Really? Well, I mean, they they want to take take Madison or, or the university at Madison out of the system. And have it a freestanding university. Yes. I don't know what they would do with all of the uh, appendages. I mean, uh, would would Parkside and and Green Bay uh, be tossed aside? Would they become part of the other system? They, yeah. My uh, understanding is they would become part of the other system. Really, the, the only thing that would be taken out would be the UW at Madison, mm -hmm. and they would have their own governing body, 21 members, yep. 11 of whom would be appointed by Governor Walker. Yes, and, and without Senate confirmation and for a three-year term. Now, I think it's important with the board, a board of regents that you have, that you have a longer term and that you don't appoint them all in the same year because uh, the way I had it set up, uh, the Board of Regents, uh, and I don't think I did it, I think I inherited it, but at any rate, uh, the Board of Regents was set up in such a way that a one-term four-year governor right. could not appoint a majority of the Board of Regents. You'd have to be re-elected in order to do that. Right. Now, I can hardly fathom a situation where you appoint uh, 11 members 
for a three-year term, and three years from now, they're all out of a job, and you've got to start over. You're right. Yes, uh, and that would be, that'd be 11 of the 21 members that's of the right. governing the University of the, the, Madison the governing Campus. board of yeah. the UW Madison, yeah. Yeah. which is our flagship university. But now, um, last year, the University of Wisconsin in Madison said, "We're now bringing in one billion dollars a year in uh, grants. research, yeah. yeah, research grants." Mm -hmm. So, given that, we have more ability. If we were given more flexibility over purchasing, hiring, and they're they're arguing that because of the one billion dollars they need a lot more flexibility you don't think that's a wise argument sir i don't think so uh i've talked to tom loftus about this he's he's, he's a member of the, the regents, regents yes yeah. he says that uh that if you let the board of regents vote on this issue that it would be 17 and zero that they all are against a against doing away with merger against it against it yes. that's very surprising yes and uh uh, he 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 talked he told me about a, uh, uh, a a speech he gave over on the campus, the Madison campus, with 200 uh, faculty members there, mm -hmm. and uh, he said he didn't see find any evidence at all that a single faculty member wanted to do away with merger. So you think we'd be stronger to keep our our current University of Wisconsin system? And Absolutely. All, all 26 campuses. As you know, Governor, we have 13 four years and 13 two years. So you think it should continue to all be yoked together? I think so. I think so. And uh, the old slogan used to be, you know, well, we, I guess I mentioned that earlier, that the, uh, uh, the borders of our state are the borders of the university. Uh, right. That would not be the case if you, uh, if you separated Madison from the rest of the system. You were able to get merger passed which which year, Governor? 71. 71. The first, the first full year that I was governor and with the Republican Senate. Right. And how do you think it worked the next six years that you were governor? My question is this. Was, uh, was Mr. Dreyfus at Stevens Point, was he treated fairly along with Green Bay and Stout? I think, and I think they were all treated fairly. And as a matter of fact, if you check out those campuses today, They've done awfully well under merger. Uh, I mean, Eau Claire, even Superior, they tell me, has a very fine university up there now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would not have been possible without merger. What do you think would happen if um, Madison was allowed to split out and have its own governing board, sir? Well, I don't know. Uh, the 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 formula that I've heard about with the 21 members, I think, is, is unworkable. Uh, and uh, I, I think that uh, as far as their independence, uh, they'd still be subject to the Department of Administration in terms of budget and so forth. Right. Uh, the other thing that bothers me is I get the impression, and this is just an impression from the outside, that uh, the uh, uh, the campus executive at Madison uh, says that she could take fewer tax dollars and raise tuition. Yes. Well, of course, uh, Walker loves that. I mean, anything he can do to, to reduce spending for, especially for something like education. Yes. Uh, he'll, he'll spend it for building roads, but not for education. Uh, he'd be delighted with that. And uh, uh, I think it's a, a very serious mistake. I, I mean, I understand the tuition now is about 10000 a year, and uh, that's not too bad for a, a world-class university, but uh, uh, Wisconsin is not a rich state. I mean, there are a lot, of, a lot of people sending their kids to Madison who probably have to, have to work hard to put together the $10,000. Right now, the University of Wisconsin system, all 26 campuses, get $1.1 $1 billion. The governor has proposed cutting that by $250 million. And of that, of the $250 million cut, Madison would get, get half of that cut, and the rest, of them, the, the, the rest of the UW system would get the other $125 million. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Chancellor Martin says, because of our size and because of our $1 billion in grants, 
we've got more ability to deal with a cut like that, especially, she wrote a memo, a 10% increase in tuition. Your feelings on tuition going up 10% a year? I think it'd be unfortunate. Okay, okay. Do you think, um, let me ask you this. We've got, as I said, we've got 14, I'm sorry, 13 four-year campuses and 13 two-year campuses. Then we have 16 tech colleges, you know, the old mm -hmm. Vogue tech sure, system. Sure, sure. Then we have about 18 or 20 private colleges and universities. Do you think the state of Wisconsin has too much higher ed, sir? Well, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the private colleges seem to be surviving very well, and uh, uh, I, don't know where, I don't know where you'd start. If you were going to shut down some of the four-year campuses, I don't know where you'd start. Right. Right. Well, go back to the dialogue then in 1971. Did some of these four-year campuses, like the Platteville's and the River Falls and the Stout, Menominee's, and Stevens Point, and Oshkosh, were they afraid of, 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 of getting merged with, with, with the Madison campus? I think, uh, I think maybe, uh, see, they had their own Board of Regents. Yes. And I think that Board of Regents uh, was nervous about, well, the fact they'd be out of business. And uh, uh, what I did was uh, to appoint a number of them as their term expired to the other border, to the Board of Regents University. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I don't know about faculty. Uh, I, I, I suppose administrative people might have feared that uh, that they would be uh, uh, they would be uh, sort of playing a minor role. Uh, Weaver, who was the president at that time, yes, of Madison, uh, yes, of Madison. Uh, actually, who, who did we have before that? Oh, I forgot. You know, I was on the campus then, Governor, so I should know. Yeah. Um, you remember that that was a campus that was divided by the Vietnam War. We saw some protests yeah, throughout yeah. the city, like we haven't seen up until yeah. the last month. But the but the, uh, the president was it Chancellor Young? Uh, no, no, that no, was afterwards. No. Okay, Young Excuse was me. fine, but uh, okay, uh, Weaver. Yes, was it Weaver. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Weaver came to me. He was over in India or someplace, and he came to see me in the governor's office. And he said, "You know, if I had still been president of the university system, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been able to get merger through. You would not have been able to get yeah. merger." And I said, "You know, I think you're right because I think the other system would have been so fearful of you because you're such a, a strong personality that uh, I would have had a hard time, but with." Uh, uh, what was the other man's name again? Uh, I forget. I forget. We just, we just said it a moment ago. Yeah, and Chancellor. Oh, um, go, I forgot, Governor. I'm sorry. But uh, but he was. He came in from Missouri, and uh -huh. he, he, at least at that point, was not a strong uh, president. And uh, I think I think the that fact made it easier to get merger through. Well, you want to talk about. Strong people. I mean, you you governed pretty strongly, didn't you, sir? I tried. Okay. Yeah. What do you believe is the philosophy of a governor that that a governor should be bold? Because Governor Walker says I'm throwing out some pretty bold ideas, and yeah. separating Madison from the UW system is one of them. If I were in Governor Walker's shoes, and got elected as he did, with a huge fiscal problem. Mm -hmm. I would have immediately sat down with the mayor of Milwaukee, with the leaders of the teachers union, with everybody else that would be hit very hard by the necessary reductions in budget that would be required. And I just said, look, we're in this together. Uh, it's going to be painful. Uh, we've got to work together to minimize the amount of damage that it does. But mm -hmm. we're we, we've got this problem. We've got a, we, we, we've, we've got to reduce our budget, right. and uh, I think that he'd have had cooperation. Instead, he takes this. Uh, he know, separates the UW, and then he offers a bill that would pretty much um, 
take away the collective bargaining rights for 300,000 public employees. Yeah, yeah, which has nothing to do with, with uh, the, <coughs> the budget bill. Uh, it doesn't fix our shortfall come Ju June 30th. Yes, sir. No. Um, well, how do you feel about now? Um, in, in, in you were governor 71 through 77. Did you sign into law the uh, collective bargaining for state workers, sir? I think that was already done. I think Gaylord Nelson did that. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, but you had to live with uh, oh, state workers as, yeah, as they of tried. Of course, and and I don't recall having any real problem with it. Okay. So uh, it was on your watch that state workers join unions, and you, you supported that. I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, one of the arguments that Governor Walker makes is now that um, public employees who are members of unions are paid so much better than private sector workers. Governor Walker calls uh, union members uh, for public se for for public employee unions the haves. And everybody who's not in a public employee union, the haves have nots. Do you think that's a pretty fair way to? No, I don't. I, I think if you look at the amount of education that's required, that uh, the salaries paid to public employees uh, are pretty, very similar to 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 what they get paid in the private sector for the same for the same amount of talent. What about the idea that public employees should contribute more towards their health care oh, and I pensions? Think, I think that's fine, and, 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 and they've, they've indicated a willingness to accept that. They have? Yeah. Yes, they have. Well, if merger of the UW system was one of your top one or two, one, two or three issues, what were the other top issues of your... Well, one was the reorganization of the judicial system. Uh, Horace Wilkie was the chief justice at the time an old friend of mine. Now, Horace came to me and he said, look, he said, you have an advantage coming into the governorship as a non-lawyer. I said, why is that? He said, because the judicial system needs reorganization. And a, a governor who is a lawyer and is going to have to be back in court after he's been governor for a while is, not, is going to be afraid of offending uh, the judges, and right. therefore he's not going to be able to put through the kind of reorganization that's required. I set up a citizens committee uh, to decide just what we should do about reorganizing the courts, and uh, it required four small constitutional amendments, and actually from 1971 to 1977, uh, it took all of that time to get the court reorganization mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, in effect, and uh, uh, the constitutional amendments didn't pass. You know, a constitutional amendment has to be approved by two, two sessions of the legislature yes, in, ide in identical language, yes. and then placed on the ballot for referendum. Right. And my referendums for those four amendments didn't occur until April of uh, of 1977, when I, I knew I was going to go to Mexico. You did. But I didn't let anybody else know because I got a hold of the Chief Justice and I said, you and I have got to go around the state and sell these four constitutional amendments. And he agreed. And we went to every town that had a TV station and pitched the, uh, the, the, the court reform. If there had been an inkling that I was going to be leaving in a few months for Mexico, the reporters wouldn't have wanted to talk about court reform at all. They'd want to talk about Mexico. When did you know you'd be leaving for Mexico? Because you left, your term ended on uh, July 6th. Yeah. That, did, did you know in March or April you'd be going I to Mexico? In, I knew in April. Uh, uh, Carter called me and asked me to do it, and I thought at first it was a crazy idea. <laughs> and, and then I thought, well, you know, uh, when the President of the United States asks you to do something, you have to take it seriously. And uh, I finally called Ham Jordan, and I said, Ham, this was about seven days after Carter called me. I yes, said, sir. Ham, I've decided to accept the, uh, the president's offer, but I said, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm not going to even tell the State Department. He says, oh gosh, he said, don't tell them. He says, they leak like a sieve. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you called the White House back and said, "Okay, I'll take the I'll take the job. I'll go to Mexico." And this was in April. Yeah. But you kept a secret until when, sir? Until probably June. Until uh, probably yeah, June. Yeah. And you, you said uh, July sixth. Uh, 
Yeah, that uh, that's actually uh, when you w that's actually uh, when you left office. I've always said it was seven seven seventy seven. Yep, yep. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, well, the biggest reason you kept that secret was it so you could pass these constitutional sure. changes? I mean, uh, once the word got out that I was going to Mexico, no reporter wanted to talk to me about state government. They wanted to talk to me about Mexico, which is understandable. Um, why were these changes to how the court system was then structured so important? Uh, I forget all the details now, but, uh, but Horace Wilkie pointed out some of them. And, uh, uh, well, for one thing, uh, the Supreme Court had, uh, had no way to, to review everything that was subject to appeal. Oh, it did and not. So we created we created the system of appellate courts, I inter see. intermediate appellate courts. Yes. yes, that was an important thing. Okay. We also gave administrative powers to the Supreme Court to to administer the whole judicial system, and uh, I think that well there were there were four constitutional amendments, so yeah. there were four major changes that we made. Those are two of them. Okay, well, so your biggest issues: merger of the UW system. Changing the court system, what, 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 what other major issue did you grapple with, sir? I'm trying to think. <laughs> well, did, did you govern in economic good times or bad? Well, as I look back on it, I, I gather that, uh, that that was a bad time, but uh, I thought we did pretty well in terms of the economy while I was governor. Did you have to raise any taxes? Yes, I did. Sales or income or both? Uh, I think mainly income. I don't think I raised sales taxes. Okay. And uh, and I did it uh, without much resistance, really. What are you proudest of, having been governor for more than six years, sir? Huh? What 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 uh, one change are you proudest of? I think the two we've talked about: the court reform and the university merger. Okay. And what one need did you not get done that you would hope to get done? I don't think there was anything big. As a matter of fact, uh, I was prepared to run for a third term. You were? And, and I had some money in the bank already for a campaign. And uh, I talked to a couple of my advisors and I said, look, uh, I'm, I'm sure I can get reelected again, but uh, I don't know what kind of program I would offer the people of Wisconsin because oh. I think we've accomplished the, the big things that we were trying to accomplish. And uh, so that, that made it a little easier for me to comply with the wishes of the president. How long were you in Mexico, sir? Uh, about two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yeah. If you had to do over, would you have still taken the Mexican oh, assignment? Oh, I think so. I think so. If, if, if you said you could be governor or ambassador, which you want to be, I'd say governor. Yes. But uh, it was kind of nice to be both. Okay. Well, what are your thoughts on being governor now in a recession with a deficit? Um, it's got to be, no matter if you're a Republican or Democrat, it's got to be a tough job, yes? Oh, it's a very painful job. And that, that's why I, I pointed out earlier that, that I would start out by going to the various people that would be hurt most and explain to them how serious the problem was and ask for their cooperation in order to minimize the amount of damage that we did to important services like higher education and municipal government. What do you think are the top three jobs of state government? Healthcare, schools, transportation, what? Well, the top three jobs would include the Chief Justice, I think. Okay. Uh, what about the functions of state government, sir? functions. Yes. Uh, we spend the most money now on public schools, yeah. the UW system, shared revenue, health care, and prisons. Hmm. Do you think we've got our priorities in order now, Governor? I think probably, probably. I, uh, uh, I visited every prison while I was governor. And uh, uh, I, uh, 
I tried to, oh, well, one thing I did <laughs> in my second term, yeah? which uh, might have been a, a very strong issue against me if I had run for a third term, uh, I discovered that we had a lot of people in prison for life uh, for murder. Uh, usually it was a, a domestic dispute that got out of hand. and. Uh, uh, but but a, a life sentence meant that there was no chance for parole. I talked to the wardens of the, the, of the various prisons and they told me that if there was some way that I could offer them some hope of, uh, of, uh, of getting, uh, what's Get, the word I want? Getting out? Yes, that, uh, that it would, it would it would solve some of their discipline problems. Oh, it would okay. Because if they knew that someday they they, 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 they could they, be released. Well, that, that at least they might get a chance before to go before the parole board. Oh, no for assurance. an opportunity no to plead. No assur assurance they'd get out. Right. But at least they go before the parole board. Okay, just get they, a chance and, to, and to make their they, case. If they knew they were going to go before the parole board in a year or two, they would want to make a real fine record of of, of good conduct. Yes. And so that. Uh, by reducing these life terms to 50 years, I was able to make them eligible to see the parole board at some point. Okay. And uh, I think that if I were running against Pat Lucy in 1978, <laughs> I'd have said he, uh, he, 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 he reduced the life sentences of 50 murderers. <laughs> well, it's obvious you're still following state government and you must have been then watching the protests of the last month in, in the Capitol, sir? Yes. Uh, once you saw news footage of that, hundreds of thousands of people coming, what's your response to it, what you've seen in the last few months or weeks? Well, I think, I think it's just a, an, an understandable reaction to the way Walker is conducting himself. Do you think Governor Walker will eventually pay a price for, for, for the way he's conducted this issue? I think so, but it's hard to tell because people have short memories and uh, it is a four-year term. Uh, but if, if he were on the ballot right now, he wouldn't get to first base. Okay. What about the idea, you've been following the news, you know that 16 of our state senators, there are organizations in place to try to turn them out of office to have them recalled. How do you feel about the principle of re, recalling some of these legislators, sir? Well, I think you have to have a reason for it. Uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a resource available to the voters that ought to be used sparingly. Sparingly. Yeah. Uh, I don't... I suppose because the Democrats decided to try for recalls against some of the Republicans that the Republicans yes. countered with the same same thing. Yes. Uh, we'll we'll see what the voters do with it. Would you expect some of them to be turned out of office? I think it's possible to be recalled. Possible. But what does it say about Wisconsin politics that 16 of our 33 senators are the targets of being recalled? Well, I think I just explained that. I mean. Uh, the Democrats had had good reason to try to get back to a majority status, yeah. and uh, and if they could get, I think three recalls of Republicans, they could do that. Yes. Uh, why they had to go for eight, I don't know, and uh, uh, with my knowledge of partisan politics, I can understand why the other side would. Uh, would counter with eight of their own. You know? How did you feel when 14 Senate Democrats left the state to block a vote on I governors? Thought, I thought it was a smart thing to do. Were you the one that came up with the idea, no, Governor? No, <laughs> no, no. But uh, if they could deny uh, a, a majority uh, a quorum uh, to the Republicans, uh, I, I understood why they were doing it. You know, Governor, I've, I've, been in, I've been in our Capitol for 23 years and I've never seen such rancor on both sides and the lack of trust. Um, any thoughts on how could we, we could get back to um, the Capitol running in a more civil, civil tone, sir? Well, I think I answered that in, in saying that had I been in Walker's shoes, yeah. I would have immediately gone to the, the various services that would be hardest hit 
by the kind of budget that I was going to have to propose right. and uh, say to them, uh, let's work together to, to, to try to minimize the damage that we're going to do. And if he called you today and asked for your advice, you would say what? I'd say just what I said to you. Okay. Okay. How do you like the tone of national politics, sir? Uh, in the wake of the Citizens United ruling, corporations can spend unlimited well, I money? I think that's just horrible. Just horrible. I, I couldn't believe the Supreme Court would do that. Uh, Congress can't pass its next federal budget? What's, what's happened to politics nationally? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, uh, You've got two pictures up of President Obama directly yes, behind yes, me. Yes, yes. Do you think he's been a good president? I do, I do, and I think he will be reelected very handily in, 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 in 2012. Did you ever think we'd be sitting, sitting here talking about an African-American who's president of the United States, Governor? Probably not, probably not. But uh, I'm very pleased that it happened and, and very proud of him. Okay. Now, you've had a life of public service. Um, if one of your grandkids said, I wanted to run for public office, what would you tell she or he? I'd encourage them. Yeah, but you'd have to give them some warnings, wouldn't you? Well, probably, yeah. Uh, what? Would you tell them you're a public figure, be careful what you do, it's going to cost a lot of money? Any caveats? Oh, I don't know. I might say some of those things, but uh, I think they would, if they were considering running, they'd know that it was going to cost some money. Have any of your grandchildren come to you and said, No. <laughs> uh, my son David got elected to the school board here. Yes, sir. And I raised uh, money for him to do that. And frankly, I thought that uh, that might just be the opening wedge that he might run for higher office. Okay. But it turned out that he wanted to get back to his law practice. Okay. Maybe a final question, sir? Sure. Why did you become a Democrat early in your life? <laughs> In 1928, yes, sir. Uh, I was 10 years old, and I was very interested in national politics. And I was for L. Smith against Herbert Hoover. And why I was for L. Smith, I'm not sure. It might be because he was Irish and Catholic. Okay. But at any rate, he was a Democrat. Yes. And I've been a Democrat ever since. So it was the basis of <laughs> Al Smith. I think, well, the, and, and, and Roosevelt, Roosevelt. At, at the tender age of 10. After, actually, I was disappointed in Al Smith after 28 because uh, he, he either showed his true colors as a conservative or, or, or became a conservative after the 28 election. Uh, it was a good thing for the Democratic Party that he lost in 28 because the Depression still would have hit. Mm -hmm. And it would have been our depression instead of Hoover's. That's true. Well, maybe last question. What do you think the uh, Republican Party stands for now? It's awfully hard to tell because I, you have to know which Republican Party you're talking about. I mean, uh, the, uh, the Tea Party mm -hmm. or uh, uh, more... more more realistic uh, Republicans. Uh, I, uh, you may not have any use for the Tea Party, right? Well, uh, I don't have any use for the uh, the, the class of uh, freshman congressmen that we've got in there now. 80, 87 many of them, members of the Many of them were Tea Party affiliates. Right. Uh, I mean, I still haven't, I'm not sure what's going to happen when they they have to extend the uh, the limits on uh, spending on national debt yes the debt the debt uh, limits and uh, it would be a uh, worldwide catastrophe if we suddenly failed uh, to meet our obligations and 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 didn't extend the authority to right well it's obvious you're still following politics and current events aren't you oh yes you yes, still love it yes i do and i I read the New York Times and the Journal Sentinel every morning. And uh, when my wife was 
a little more alert about things. Yes, sir. Uh, she insisted that uh, that I had to read the New York Times every day to get my marching orders. I understand. <laughs> Governor, you've been very gracious. Thanks, well, thank you. thanks for letting us come to your home. Thanks for your time. And uh, thanks for your impressions on the merger and things that yeah. you dealt with and modern are we, are politics. We, are we off camera now? We can be. Yeah.